Hello health champions. Today I want to talk about the immune system and the top 10 foods that can help it work better. Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg. I'm a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you want to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. So it's a little misleading to talk about the immune system because there's not really any such thing. When we talk about the immune system, we're talking about your body's capacity to defend itself. So it's not like you have an immune system. You are an immune system. Everything about you participates in your ability to defend yourself. You have 40 trillion cells and every one of them is doing their part. They provide physical barriers to keep foreign invaders out, the skin, the inside, the lining of the lungs and so forth. We have cell membranes that determine what goes in and out. The virus, bacteria, they have to get through and past these membranes. We have mucus which is secreted off of mucous membranes to act as a barrier and trap foreign agents. We have chemical defenses. We have free radicals. We have phagocytes that, that secrete toxic substances that poison these foreign invaders to death. We have detoxification. We have the liver and the spleen and the kidneys that are filtering out these foreign agents and the broken down substances. And then, of course, we have the cell-based immune system, the white blood cells. And this is oftentimes what people talk about primarily when they talk about the immune system, but it is so much more. So how do we build the immune system? Well, it starts with whole food. And whole food has vitamins, it has whole complex vitamins, it has minerals, in their natural, organic, absorbable form. It has essential amino acids and it has essential fatty acids. These are the resources that your cells need to do what they do. So by eating whole food, by eating nutritionally dense food, you're continuously providing resources for your body and your cell to do what it's supposed to do. Now processed food and fast food, it has less vitamins and less minerals and less amino acids and less essential fatty acids because the processing destroys them on purpose. Okay? These have nutrients so they don't have shelf life. These have the nutrients removed so that we can get shelf life. And people often ask, what do I take to improve my immunity? But we want to think about it as a balance. There's some things that help and there's some things that hurt immunity and we need to understand both sides of it. So what helps immunity are things like vitamin C and vitamin D and vitamin A. These are immune boosters. They are white blood cell activators. They participate in this cell-based immune system. Vitamin A is critical for mucous membranes that act as barriers. Then we have zinc, which is the key trace mineral to activate white blood cells. Another important mineral is calcium. But what we're talking about is ionizable calcium, something that is quickly and readily converted in the body into calcium bicarbonate. And unfortunately, almost all supplements sold are calcium carbonate, also known as limestone or chalk. The body doesn't know what to do with it. It is very, very difficult for the body to convert into calcium bicarbonate. So a really good form would be calcium lactate. It's only one step away from becoming calcium bicarbonate. And then, of course, essential amino acids and essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids can help modulate inflammation. They are essential for making up healthy membranes and healthy barriers in the body. And amino acids or proteins, they are what makes up all these immune cells. 
So, of course, the white blood cells have to be made from something, and I'm sure you've heard of immunoglobulins. Those globulins are proteins, and they require essential amino acids to be put together. But we want to stop thinking about these things as drugs. Stop thinking about them as pills, because we have this drug mentality that if a little bit does something, then more is better or more does a lot. These are nutrients. The body just needs enough and enough is enough. When you have enough, then more isn't necessarily better. More isn't going to do more. It's just going to be wasted. At times it could unbalance something else, but it's a nutrient, all right? We don't need mega doses. We just need enough. And then there are things that hurt immunity. And this is really, really important. And people forget about this, but there is no nutrient, there is no pill that can make up for a continuous supply of toxins. So when we eat things like sugar, excess sugar, excess alcohol, when we smoke, we're constantly putting poison in our body. There is no nutrient that can compensate for that. Stress is detrimental and processed foods will deplete your body and break it down and wear it down gradually. It has low nutrient content, high sugar content, high chemical content. And just one more thing before we get to the top 10 list. I know some people just want to jump ahead, but please hear me out here. Because, like I said, there is no nutrient that can make up for a poison. And if I just gave you the list, it'd be like selling you an umbrella that doesn't protect you from the rain, but that actually rains on you. All right. So here's what we want to think about that short term. I believe that probably 50% of the impact of what you're trying to accomplish and strengthening your immune system is not about what you take. It's about what you avoid. And then I would say probably 40% is due to stress in terms of interfering with your immune system. And then the last 10% would be nutrition and the things that you can take. Now, these are not exact numbers. I'm just trying to give you an idea that probably 90% of the impact on your immune system are things that people don't even focus on. They eat sugar and they stress to death and then they wonder what kind of pill, what kind of food can I take? Long term, then I can't really prioritize one over the other because they're all essential. You have to avoid sugar and toxins. You have to reduce stress. You have to eat real food in the long run for your body to function optimally. So just keep that in mind as we move into the list. Number one immune boosting food is garlic. It has a tradition spanning thousands of years of helping people improve immunity. It has an active ingredient, a component called allicin, which is a sulfur compound. And we know that garlic has antibacterial properties, antiviral properties, anti-yeast properties, and antifungal properties, as well as anti-mold. So it will actually kill off a lot of these microbes. It'll help us work. So in that sense, it's not so much a nutrient, but it has medicinal properties. In addition to that, it has 50% of our daily allowance of vitamin C per 100 gram. Now, don't go all out on garlic for that reason because it's kind of hard to eat 100 grams or three and a half ounces, especially since it's most potent if you eat it raw. It would also give you 10% of your daily zinc and 18% of your calcium. Immune boosting food number two is ginger. It's another medicinal food. We don't eat it so much for the nutrient, even though it has some. We know it has antimicrobial properties and it has been studied specifically for fungus like candida, like yeast overgrowth. It can help with the digestion so you can absorb more nutrients, but also to help have a better gut flora and your biome, your gut flora, participates 
in your immune system. So a healthy gut and a healthy digestion is certainly of benefit. And ginger can also be beneficial as an inflammation modulator. Food number three is turmeric root. The active component is called curcumin. It is also antimicrobial. It is an inflammation modulator, but it also has the capacity to reverse effects of stress. So they found in a study that if you stressed mice, then they would have certain effects with their adrenal cortex would enlarge and thicken. They would make more cortisol and their hypothalamus would reduce the amount of BDNF, which is a very beneficial hormone that we need to make new brain tissue and new synapses in the brain. And they found that turmeric reversed all of those changes. So it has a profound impact on stress. Turmeric can have a beneficial effect on gut healing. So if you have leaky gut, it can help heal the lining and it can also help improve the biome. Food number four is cod liver oil. And I love this picture. It's from a Norwegian grocery store. And the section on cod liver oil looks like the section on soda or cereal in an American store. One tablespoon of cod liver oil has 375% of your daily needed vitamin D. It has 450% of the vitamin A in a tablespoon. But it also gives you these essential fatty acids, the EPA eicosapentaenoic acid and DHA docosahexaenoic acid, over a thousand milligrams and over 2,500 milligrams. So one tablespoon is plenty to give you all of those things per day. And in addition to building healthy cell membranes, these essential fatty acids are also modulating inflammation. Food number five is eggs. And if you have three large eggs a day, then you get 33% of your daily vitamin D, 30% of vitamin A, 22% of your zinc, 9% of your calcium. You also get 21 grams of complete protein and it is insulin healthy. And what does that have to do with anything? Well, there's been a lot of talk recently about how people are more susceptible to the coronavirus if they're insulin resistant, if they have diabetes, if they have cardiovascular disease. Well, it's the insulin that's at the key of this. So when we eat immune boosting foods, it's not just what they have, it's what they don't have. So we wanna focus on these foods that don't trigger insulin. And eggs are very, very insulin healthy. Food number six is king crab. How fortunate can we be when a delicacy is also something that's healthy? So six ounces or 170 grams will give us over 100% of our daily zinc. It'll give us 20% of the vitamin C. And this was a surprise to me because there are virtually no animal foods other than a few organ pieces that have some vitamin C but here's one of the very few exceptions. It has 8% of your daily calcium and will give you 31 grams of complete protein. And again, it is insulin healthy. Food number seven is steak. So a six ounce steak, 170 grams, will give you 145% of your daily zinc. It will give you 40 grams of complete protein. And that looks pretty tasty to me, and it is still insulin healthy. Food number eight is bell pepper. So 100 grams, which is three and a half ounces, will give us twice the vitamin C we need, all the vitamin A, a little bit of zinc and calcium, but every bit counts. And also they have lots of minerals and trace minerals, and still it is very insulin healthy. Food number nine, broccoli, 100 grams, three and a half ounces, will give us 148% of our daily vitamin C, 21% of the vitamin A, little bit of zinc, little bit of calcium, and again, no problem for the insulin. Food number 10, pumpkin seeds. 
3 ounces, 85 grams, will give you almost all of the zinc you need in a day, 5% calcium, and 40% of healthy fats. They're not as healthy as the fish fats, because the fish fats are already in the EPA DHA form that we need, but some of these fats can be converted into those end products. And we get all that without messing with insulin. So it's about getting a wide variety of whole foods. I've given a few examples of some really good foods, but keep in mind it's even more about not putting in things or not doing things that stress you and destroy your immune system. I believe the vast majority of health problems come from the damage you do from sugar and chemicals and stress. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you also look at this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.